Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Room 2 DEI Divide et Impera. Here today on the channel, we're back with episode 3 of our sub modded Maureen Empire series. Here today, we're still continuing to make India, or Proto India, great again. So, like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. So far in this series, we've managed to take out one Seleucid Strappy. We're still waiting for. The rest to revolt. Hopefully they do. Uh, so far we haven't got the RNG in doing so. Sometimes they all revolt at the same time. Sometimes they come in spurts. Sometimes they um, don't rebuild to the late game. It just depends on how the Seleucids are holding. But it seems like in this particular campaign, they're doing well and are holding their successor state together uh, for now. So in doing so, we had to push into the Arabian Peninsula. <laughs> we managed to push on over, but at a massive cost, we have managed to take a province in Oman. So we might look now to push further into the Arabian Desert with our allies, Hagar, to go against Saba, um, essentially the tribes in and around Yemen and whatnot, uh, the Himya here. They are at war with Saba. Interesting. So we could use that to our advantage particularly. Oh, here we go. Parsa has broken their alliance with the Seleucid. No way. Oh, perfect. And the other one, Patha... Oh, they're... they're oh, Bactria? What? Okay, so Bactria seems like they've puppeted that state there because they rebelled against them. Or oh, they made a non-aggression pact with them. I guess they might end up puppeting them or something. Oh, here we go. Seleucid Vassid, Vassals Rebel. Oh, so there's actually an event. Interesting. Okay, so I didn't know that. Um, it actually happens eventually. Oh, okay. So maybe we're a little bit impatient pushing on over. So I guess we go over back and we look to push into Parthava and Parsa against the uh, Persians and Parthians. So they asked... Okay, there are always so many people now. So the Strappy Revolt has officially happened. Sometimes it doesn't, I suppose. Okay. So... I still might maintain a military presence here in Southern Arabia. Hagar really likes oh, us because we joined their war. Yeah, so if we can farm this relation further, so that would be ideal. And they do border the Seleucids up there. So, let's talk to our good friends in... Oh, I don't even know where this is. Is this Kuwait? <laughs> Maybe. Um, they got two full stacks there. I'm so shocked at how... strong and how many units these Arabian factions have. Like, how? Are they usually meant to be this strong? In my Lord's name. Well, they're going to accept a... I am uh, military access, they will, but... Yeah, if we can farm an alliance with them, that would be good. The thing is, because we have essentially no other cultural group in this game, we're going to have to essentially try and get some allies. It just depends how the cookie's going to crumble. There's a fair few ways you can go in this campaign. So, you can ally with the Arabs, the Hellenics, um, the Hellenic faction successing in and around us. We've got Persians and Parthians and Steppes and whatnot. We're going to be able to get Arabian auxiliaries here. That actually might be good just to have tactically. Because the peninsula has such a huge pop in DEI. It might actually be better than getting our core ethnic Indian Hindu units. Because we still need to grow that um culture. And nearly be nearly be worth converting if you could. But you can't change culture in this particular campaign. Okay, so I guess we make plans to go against these guys, because we kind of want that. Because we haven't even stabilized our home province. So let's go to war with the Persians up here, and we'll start continuing to invest further into our army back at home. Okay, so we are a little bit border gory at the moment, as we've taken a piece of territory not connecting. So I guess it's an exclave. I think that's what you technically call it. Riot in the capital. Oh no. We can crush the riot. I think that's what we do. Send in the troops. Axum has been officially destroyed. That's no good. So I imagine the kingdom of Kush is growing in influence. Mesopotamia is still fully under the control of the Seleucids. Oh wait, no, they're starting to get pushed here. Um, We could intercept that. That's a pretty big Seleucid army there, though. Okay. Um, do we switch to tax? Yeah, because we've had a little bit of a food issue. 
Once we start taking more territory, it's going to be more. Do I go through the desert here? Or you, the thing is, you go by roads to not get the attrition, but we can probably tank a turn there. As we push for Parada to secure the copper resource. I imagine that's going to help us infantry-wise quite a bit. Okay, let's move you further south. I'll, I want to try and keep a full stack in Arabia because then we can... If we see an opportunity to go against Saba or Axum or maybe betray Hagar, we might take it, but we'll see. Um, Army-wise, we can get four unit, four armies. Not full with units. I guess we go with the elephants there. They seem to be the best over the chariots, even though they're quite expensive. Um, let's get a baggage train there, and then we'll try and get those Indian archers, because they seem to be quite good. But even the Persian ones, I'm actually... Surprised how effective archers are pretty early on for this roster. They're quite good. Another child is born. Ashoka has gone up. I wonder if Ahsoka is um, named after Ashoka, potentially. Okay, continue to move you down there. There's another spice resource there. If we could dominate the spice resources for this campaign, that would kind of be insane. Tax Collector, getting those edicts down as well. Okay, so Bindasara, from his nearly narrow defeat in Arabia, his Pyrrhic Arabian victory, is now back, and Ashoka is now ruling the lands in Arabia. Uh, military research is probably not too bad. Okay, so I'm actually just going to really just spam out these Arabian Auxiliaries. They're quite good. 300, which is a fair bit, but only like hardly any upkeep. It actually might be tactical to do that. Okay, we're going to use the movement cheese here. So that's going to give us a slinging movement. Sometimes you can like a movement bug. Um, instead of dropping in your troops just at the base of the settlements, if you can like... I don't know how you do it. It sometimes happens. So we're going to sling it all the way up to Bam. So, yes, we are going to use the cheesy exploit. Exploit. Oh, we've got access to Morian Axemen. So let's grab those. And let's get those archers as well. Okay, so we're going to be able to go against the Persians here quite soon. And we've got those auxiliaries. Now, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get repaired, but they will be quite effective in combat. Hmm. Maybe we make sure the Arabians fight in Arabia so we can replenish them, and then maybe the Indian units in those territories that we want to expand into. Okay, let's end the turn to continue. Trade agreement dissolved from Nabatia. Really? That was quick, unfortunately. Um, okay, so that's now ended, so just need to keep an eye on that. Civil Wars Why still continuing on our massive construction and recruitment blitz. Okay, so getting a lot of Arabian auxiliaries here. That's good. We'll put them to work in the peninsula eventually. And we're making plans to go north to go against Zarenka, the Persians just north of Pura. And we're going to try and unite the home province. And then I guess we go against... Well, we'll see, what's, we'll see what happens. We could go into Gore and Parsa. It just depends what happens north. Um, Bactria seem to be not holding on to power. Um, we've also got Parthia up here. And, like, the steppes could maybe gain some influence and maybe push south. We'll just sort of see what happens. But at the moment, we're just moving. It just takes so long in DEI to move about, so we skipped a little bit ahead here. Just to get these units in range. Okay, so let's move them in, and let's go to push to Parada. So it seems like we're just logistically moving. Um, moving about, especially through the desert with attrition. The roads aren't properly built, really. We're going to have to take our time as well, because we don't want to get too much negative attrition. So we've got two full stacks here, looking to push. And we're going to have another one on the way eventually. But so far, we have managed to recoup 
those losses from down in the Arabian Peninsula. And we're going to start to slowly but surely pick apart those Seleucid vassals. Okay, war declared with... Oh, Saba and Hagar. Interesting. We might be able to use that to our advantage. We'll see. We still hold 61%. You're a proper noble now. Um, so we'll adopt you, bring you in. And we'll get you married off quickly as well. We do have a bunch of children here, which is nice. As we are using the children sub mod. One mod I'd highly recommend. You can just find it on the Steam Workshop. It's quite easy. Okay, nearly got a full stack here with Ashoka. And then he can go into Saba. Ashoka of Arabia. He's going to be. Um, so make sure when you're moving about the desert in Rome too, especially in DEI, try to aim for roads. There are some circumstances where it's strategically better to take the couple hundred of attrition if you're moving about. There are always so many people there though. Can I negotiate with Egypt to go against them? Because they're at war with the Seleucids. The enemy of my enemies, my friend. Doesn't seem to work though. Maybe there's someone else. My Lord Who are they at war with? Nabatia. I will be Maybe we talk to them. They seem to be getting carved apart though, but they tend to be quite strong in DEI. Alright, so let's push up here and hopefully try and get a battle. There's no army there. You've got to be kidding me. Where are they? Oh, I can't remember. Were they attacking... Or maybe they're north. Oh, I don't know what's going on. They might have a settlement further north, potentially. We'll have to see. Let's end the turn and continue. They might intercept us. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Didn't get attacked during the end turn phase. Move my spy to Saba now. So if they move out... Oh, pirates spotted down in the Red Sea. Yikes. Does that sound familiar? Okay, so they got two full stacks. Oh, they actually took that. Interesting. Is that why they're at war with them? A lot of axe infantry again. Oh my god. Are they going to march out against them? If her, if her guard... I want to see this. I might mobilize this army. Is it worth getting three more units or should we get it moving? Maybe. We do need a navy here. We need food. Um, let's go with siege because we're going to be doing a lot of sieges now. Okay, let's push against Zaranka. Oh my god, I'm going to take that auto-resolve. Even though the number's 2 to 1. If we bring this army in, we can farm more experience. Yeah, and now it's like 99 percentile. So 8,000 Morians are going to descend upon these Persians. Let's occupy. Oh, okay, so they've got a settlement in the north. So we can continue north against them. A lot of military buildings here. We're slowly but surely bringing Hindu influence into the region. The money's just a bit low. Okay, so... Do I make peace with them? Because I don't know if I want this territory yet. Maybe. Uh, but then we're going to be bordering Bactria. And Parthia there. I guess we'll just see how this plays out. Okay, so... Mm, Morian Maceman. That's the second tier unit we've got available now. Moving away from the Allied Swordsman. We've got such a big roster, actually. Maybe we need to send this army to Arabia. Oh, not, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get over, though. Mm, those pirates there are going to be annoying. We'll see how they react, potentially, in the north. Um, can't get any more agents, unfortunately, and we'll see what happens there. That's going to be really interesting. We might be able to go against Saba. We'll see. Going to be interesting to see how things play out. Okie dokes. Welcome to the top of the turn. Nothing really has changed overly too much. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'm sensing an, an opportunity here. If they battle <laughs> in the desert, oh, why are Hagar moving there? I guess they kind of match their roster. Um, if if they can destroy at least a stack or two, I might be able to just push on in and take that piece of territory. 
Wouldn't be too bad if they take it. Oh, so Saba has expanded to two settlements now. That's annoying. I would have liked if there were one. Okay, I am going to basically shadow that army and we'll see what happens. So, we're going to send Ashoka. How can I get there? We've got military access, so we can go into their territory. I think we'll follow the road, because we don't want to start losing men in the desert. We need to keep every single able-bodied Morian to help. But, yeah. Even if they lose, as long as they do like a high amount of damage, it should be okay. We shall see, and we're going to need to deal with that pirate scourge, because that could really start raiding, blockading, trade lanes and whatnot. At the moment, there seems to be a lot of coastal territory changing hands. Man, if we had access to, like, a proper trade economy, we'd be making so much money. Uh, we need to change that. Hang on. I was trying to build a farm there. Or maybe we go with copper, because that will be infantry. Um, okay, so I guess we're still waiting for them to maybe attack. How far can I go north? Just to see what's going on. Okay, so they've got an army fortified there. 20 units, and it's the region capital. Another 20 units? I'm just so used to playing in Western Europe in Gaul and... Italy, like, the garrisons aren't usually this big. I guess, maybe, it's still quite built up from Alexander's conquest, but maybe. Alright, I guess we can move here. We are at war with them. They might potentially attack us. They do have a lot of enemies, um, but sitting here would be quite a good position, I think. And we'll see how they react, I suppose. What? They... Oh, god damn it. Oh, okay, dude. So they've bypassed us and hit... Para. They're bloody... Okay. No point of playing that. Oh, no. Pathava have joined our enemies. Oh, okay, dude. Um, Population surplus. I guess that's good. That's no good. We're getting ganged up on now. So, can we make peace with them because they did that or not? You Low. Say anything, oh, it looks like we're really getting sucked into this battle royale now. Let the peace of Pharaoh. Uh, I could have another stack over here, but maybe we wouldn't be able to afford it. I don't know. We need money. Audience. Negotiating with the kingdom of Kush. That'd be good. Oh, this is really bad, actually. Well, oh my god, we've actually been divided and conquered here. Hang on, if I move this here, Bindasara, we'll siege that. Can you come in as reinforcements? Yes, you can. Okay. So this is, oh, this actually might have worked. Hang on, I'm going to manually play this one. And we'll have a, jeez, a 13,000 man battle. I nearly should auto resolve, but I kind of want to play it. It'll be a good battle. They're actually going to come out against us? Oh, okay. Okay, so... I guess this might have worked. If there was only one stack. There is two, so it's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so we're going to just cluster up here. We'll wait for those additional reinforcements to come in. They might even close the distance against us. Okay, so... Although... That settlement was ours. We only held it for a season, so basically it's still very much their territory. Um, if we were to fight this in a siege, it would have been good. A land battle's perfect. So I would much prefer fighting this army back down here in the south than up north near that regional capital. So we'll wait for a second to rally up. We'll make things a little bit nicer. We're just going to left click drag the infantry units and we'll cluster the archers as well. Just so it's a little bit easier for me micro. 
and we should be able to crush this Persian host here today. So let's make it a a little bit wider. Let's try and match their width, ideally. We've got so many archers. We're going to be out of range. So much skirmish fire down around them. Okay, let's move. We've even got cavalry there as well. Okay, so... First major fight against... The Persians here. Yeah, if they were united, they would be so much stronger. But a smart thing the Seleucids did is basically gave them their own regional autonomy. They are starting to gang up against me a little bit. At the end of the day, we are foreign invaders. Alright. Just try and wait for our units to line on up and we'll see how the enemy reacts okay I've skipped a little bit ahead because they are so slowly advancing we've got an opportunity here with my skirmishes to get our first little bit of conflict here on the right so we're gonna move up our three missile cav which aren't the best in our roster but these guys are very light they've got a huge number to them if they had 200 it would be ideal but 300 I just don't know how we're gonna do and now they're just gonna skirmish back right at us I am still shocked we'll move into the forest here just for some protection but that these settlements in the Far East with one two regions these factions can essentially wield massive amounts of units like usually two full stacks which is somewhere between 30 to 40 units, and then the garrison as well, so... I'm just surprised that we're having such large-scale battles here. Okay, let's move here. We might be able to get a Hail Mary on the general unit here. That would really help us out. Do we have one unit of camera on us here? Okay, so they're starting to push up a little bit closer. Once they engage my front line, we'll be able to start attacking so we do have our own Persian archers which are allied to the Mauryans but most of our infantry is Indian okay so they're gonna move up let's give out some attack orders need to watch out for those deployables there oh there does seem to be some cow drops so that's something we should be mindful of okay so let's give out some attack orders um, we're gonna be able to get some flanking maneuvers here so let's charge now the Persians have decent cavalry and skirmishes so we don't want to be sitting too far back and just copping all that missile fire so we're gonna close the distance use our infantry and just start wrapping around them I think they're narrowly they're sitting quite narrow so we're gonna be able to use that to our advantage okay unfortunately those missile cab got engaged so and now they're just getting peppered by that Arch unit there. I don't know how we're doing. We're not doing that well against that general unit. Okay, we're starting to boot and scoop. And now we're engaging. Still getting some pretty decent fire over the top. Keeping my elephants in reserve. We don't need them just yet. If I push them too far up, they're going to go berserk, I think, because it's just the archers there. Uh, go against those light. Um, there we go. That's good. All right. you. Uh, that could be better. All right, you move here. Wrap around this. Wrap, wrap, wrap. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Continue to go for that. Nice, we've got a lot of width. Um, make sure we give out proper attack orders. Get around this way. The general's still holding. So if we can crush this full stack, we'll basically just move back up north, embed ourselves quite close to that settlement. I don't particularly want to go anywhere near or engage that. 20 units. <laughs> Maybe wait for them to come against us. So we caught them by surprise here. I'm actually honestly quite surprised this army actually managed to bypass us here. I don't know how they did that. I thought we were sitting on that road and secured it. But they somehow slunk around the pass. Those cheeky Persians. They always manage to find some random goat track to get around. <laughs> That's a 300 reference. Okay. Oh, they're wavering a little bit there. 
Yeah, it's just because they're getting... Is that friendly fire? Mm, maybe. Or maybe they're just good then. Okay. Uh, yeah, some of these units are sitting idly by. Oh, it's just... Sometimes... In Rome 2, and I guess in the Warhammer games, like when you have like 30 to 40 units, it's sometimes a little bit hard to micro. I feel like 20 is like the perfect. People always say we want bigger total wars. But maybe they have more units per... More men per unit might be easier, but... 40 units is nearly too much for me. But fierce fighting is now breaking out. As we slowly but surely... Paint... The Middle East a beautiful blue. A more blue. Nice. They're starting to route now. And we're properly starting to use these macemen. Which are starting to... Last a lot longer in combat, armor-wise. Nice. So at the moment, we're mostly focusing on Persians and a small amount of Arab tribes, which might end up being more if we go to war with Saba. We'll see. Let's continue. Okay, decisive victory. Big W. 800 lost. We crushed their 4,000, which is quite a bit. Eastern Spearmen are not the best. It's mostly their skirmishes and cavalry that did most of the impact. Alright, so that's one full stack crushed. Bindasara, slowly but surely going up in stats. Um, let's occupy again. And we'll try and rebuild the bloody copper mine there. So we're going to be able to get like really good armored units there. Fishing boats actually might be good. But maybe we should go with food. I haven't decided just yet. Anyway, unfortunately on that note, it's time to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 3 of this Total War Rome 2 DEI Mauryan Empire Indian series. We're going to continue to focus against the Persians in the north. And if there's an opportunity to go to war with Saba and help our Himyar, no, Hagar allies, we'll do it. Okay, so pa Parthia... It's maybe a potential ally there. Hmm. We'll see. Anyway, like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Come on for the algo. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Goodbye.